Hello and welcome to Two Strangers One Podcast. This is our special Stranger Con episode. Unfortunately, it's going to be a hell of a lot shorter than you expected. Due to technical difficulties, the whole episode didn't get recorded. We only got about the first eight minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play for you the audio we were able to recover. And then after that, a performance of Solo Acoustic, a.k.a. Kevin Cooley, with his cover of Kenny Wayne Shepherd Band's Blue on Black. Enjoy. Due to the graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. Thank you everyone for coming out. All right, so I just want to double check the mic. Okay, so we're doing good. We're doing good. <laughs> One, two. When the little thingy moves, that means we're doing brown cow. Something good. Thank everybody for coming out to the very first Stranger Con. You're all part of a history yes, right now. History. This is um, it. A big round of applause for Left for Dead, Shut Up Zeke, and uh, two fat ladies. Two fat ladies. Yes, they were great. They were great. They were awesome. And thank you. And then thank you all for the space. Later on tonight, um, is it going to be? Uh, is are you going as Kevin or are you going as Solo Acoustic? Okay, Solo Acoustic later on, and um, Honest John is Super Sarah. Super Sarah. Thank you very much. It's okay to clap. It's okay. And you know. How many of you know what a podcast is? That was it's the first question right out of my mouth. What is a podcast? I was putting up flyers all week, and people were like what's a podcast? You know, it's like, no, it's like an internet radio show. And, you know, it was just, I didn't realize how many people have no idea what a podcast is. So, um, that's what we do. That's what we do <laughs> every week. We and this is the first funny. time we're doing it in front of a crowd. Usually it's in my bedroom. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> and actually we, we just moved out. Uh, every other week we'll be doing a show at comics, etc. just down the road at 1115 main East main street and opposite weeks. Uh, her father owns a old um, Italian restaurant, and it's yeah, it's it's being excavated. So we uh, we actually record in the basement, and it's like something out of like The Sopranos or, or The Godfather. It's pretty creepy. Yeah, it's. Been, <laughs> I think I hear voices when I have the headphones on, like you know, when they have the uh, electronic, uh, when they do the looking ghost hunters and stuff like that. Like, help me, help me. <laughs> so, um, and feel free to be honest. Who here hasn't heard us before? All they oh, well, uh, <laughs> my sound, my sound of applause. I okay. sound, we can't see anything. Yeah, I can't. We get the lights are right in our eyes. Um, okay, for those, basically, basically the whole crowd. Basically, <laughs> what we do is I talk about every reality show that people won't admit to watching. And, um, that's my guilty pleasure. And and I'm the sci-fi geek, comic yes. book nerd. Uh, everything like that and then the our basically the podcast is you know how our worlds collide you know she talks about her stuff I talk about my stuff and oddly enough I'll get her into the Avengers and then she gets me into like watching keeping up with the Kardashians yeah, recently and he's been watching that, so. Chloe and Kim take Miami like real man <laughs> so where, where to start where to start I got a whole bunch of uh, notes here uh, did you know, did you hear about M. Night Shyamalan? Yeah, I, I did. I have that on my notes, actually. M. Night Shyamalan <laughs> was day. the ghostwriter for She's All That. Mm-hmm. And, and I the, think um, Stuart Little. Little. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, you know, because all those movies have, like, a twist. Like, you know, she's, you know, where, like, you know, they're dead at the end or the they were superheroes or... So I was like, I wonder, you know, was that supposed to be his twist? Like, oh, the nerdy girl with uh-huh. the nerdy girl is really hot. So <laughs> that was his twist at the end. Did you see the Honey Boo Boo? <laughs> honey Boo Boo is, I guess, I don't know, premiering in June, mm-hmm. I think, June or July. Uh-huh. Um, but they're doing a scratch and sniff promo, 
Like, oh my god. For, for the, for the, the Honey Boo Boo is the last thing get, I want to scratch um, and sniff. Right. You get a People's Magazine. I think that's the magazine. Mm-hmm. And it, like, like a, a number, number pops up during the premiere and you're supposed to scratch whatever. And so it's going to smell like cheese doodles. Yeah. And like it's the last show and, uh, that I would want to smell anything. Sketty, which is basically um, farts and what else would they It's have? noodles and ketchup. Noodles and ketchup would be a lot of scenes. <laughs> doodles. I've never heard of that. Yeah, no, well, smell vision It's well, I've never heard of that. <laughs> yeah, I think this is the first they decided to do it on Honey Boo Boo. And just to let you guys know, um, I'm uh, you know, don't report me to the IRS. I'm I'm reporting. If anything, I spoke to all you guys about condos in Florida, so just uh, keep that out. There. <laughs> um, I've noticed girls always seem to have find trouble losing stuff in their purse. Yeah. It's the luggage. luggage. I think it's, it's luggage like, <laughs> I think it's like, like you usually like, gotta dump it out when you really need something and you can't find it. It's like it has like a quicksand effect. Like every time you put stuff on top, it kind of like when the bag shifts. It's amazing what people keep in there. Sometimes like a small child comes out or like a bottle of liquor. And it's amazing what you can put in those. And every Kleenex since 1965. <laughs> so uh, last night I went out to the uh, East End Festival. And I wanted to promote Stranger Con, you know, for all the wonderful people that were here. I wanted to go dressed. I was going to go dressed as Robin from Batman and Robin. And I actually, not his physique. Yeah, and you know, tattoos and a goatee. I'm like Robin falling on hard times. A twin. <laughs> and I was gonna, and I was I was talked out of it. I was talked out. We of talked it. you out of it. Uh, I don't. She's Is in the she crowd. Jen, Jen talked me out of it. She Thank said, you. She said, I just don't think you. And I was like. You know, I would have got arrested. I need whenever I had I have a bad idea. I need someone out there to tell me that it's a good idea. <laughs> I need I need someone good to say go right ahead. Uh, that was not a good idea. Thank you, <laughs> thank you for being there. And we were. I told him, and he just insisted. Did you go, or were you working last night? No, I was working. Oh, okay, and uh, so the. Uh, How was, was it? Gonna say, I went to the East Ave. Uh, it was. It looked like a recruiting session for the Jersey Shore. It was every gym, <laughs> tan, laundry. I'm, I got uncomfortable around that many a white trainer, people. You're a trainer. Yeah. Oh, everybody. You got to oh. marry a trainer. Big guy. <laughs> you know, and then there was people, and there was like a girl selling cigars. All the guys oh. had to smoke cigars. And, and you know, I, I don't understand, like, when you go into a bar and you're like this. Like, who has fun like this? Like, I just... You know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry that happened. Can I have my drink? You know, well, that'd be eight dollars. You know, I'm glad I came out tonight. So it was good. <laughs> what bands were playing? Oh, Anybody? There were a bunch of bands. Oh. I mean, I know the other. Um, JJ Lang was playing. I know he was. He's, he's he may come out tonight. So I don't. Okay. You know, maybe he's stuck in traffic like everybody else. <laughs> no, I didn't know what was. Um, the fat one that they had. Not, he used to be fat. Uh, Blues Traveler? Tra- yeah. Oh, he was for the party. Blues Traveler was a par- uh, party in the park or something. couldn't get him for <laughs> Just come a week early. It was two do- Well, um, <laughs> Puddle of Mud's playing in a couple weeks. So Here? Yeah. In the, in the same festival. But I want to I wanna go see Puddle of Mud. Because any yeah. song, she fucking hates me. Nah, nice love nah, nah. song. Which actually was stolen. <laughs> if you listen to that riff, there's a band by, there's a band seriously called Suicidal Tendencies. Mm-hmm. And... They uh, <laughs> and they have a song called. Sounds like happy music. They have a song called "I Saw Your Mommy and Your Mommy's Dead." Oh, that's a cute song. And if you listen, you could put those two right next to each other, and they're the exact same song. It's the Are exact you same. Say that's a puddle of mud. Yeah, <laughs> puddle of mud. I'm gonna say you guys just told me suicidal tendencies. Oh, and I forgot. Uh, Law, when you get a chance, <laughs> if I get a, uh, it was about that time that I asked the house manager to get us a an extension cord. Unfortunately, he wasn't where he was supposed to be, so the rest of the episode wasn't recorded. So let's keep it moving, and this is Kevin Cooley performing Blue on Black. Now keep in mind that this audio was taken off my phone. Kevin Cooley did a great job. Unfortunately, my phone was a little overpowered by the house speakers. So here we go.
Jackpot. What is it? It is a self-published book by Christopher Cologne. Chris Cologne? Smells good to me. But- <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. I broke that fucking cold little exterior. He's like, hee hee But it is spelled C-O-L-O-N. I'm punny. But... <laughs> Double Jackpot is a book about a comic book artist, Eric, who is in a loveless relationship with a materialist. I feel you, Eric. Lynette. I, 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 oh, fucking. Are you oh, sure man. I didn't write this? <laughs> uh, I, I smell, sounds hauntingly familiar. He starts cheating on his girlfriend with a more creatively, su- sorry, creatively supportive woman, Nadia. Oh, I, I gotta meet her. Where's the Nadia? There's your summer girlfriend. Summer Nadia is Nadia. Nadia? Yeah, I think Nadia spelled with an A. All right. Both Lynette and uh, Nadia play the double jackpot, the largest payout in lotto history, much like the recent Powerball. Both girls play his birth date as the winning re- as the winning numbers. Eric is now stuck between two of the country's richest women. Who will he choose? It's not that simple. This is a clever fucking idea, yeah, man. Is. Look at her, fucking. She's impressed. I am. Summer. She got some summer reading. <laughs> Christopher Cologne smells real lovely with an original idea. This is. I've never heard this before. I haven't either. This is a self-published book, much in the indie spirit as Kev's Clerks. Oh, you don't even need to name check me. This is just a good idea. You could stand on your own, man. You don't even have to be like, hey, remember Clerks? This is nothing like that. (laughs) This is way more original than Clerks. This is a good idea, man. Why didn't I think it is? I need something to read. This book is part of the Comic Books Heavy Metal Video Games Trilogy Book 2, Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, coming soon. Right on, man. It's part of a trilogy. This is the first part. Way to write, man. He's seeking a literary agent. Motherfuckers, anybody out there? There ain't no literary agents listening to this show. I assure you, sure. Sure. I assure you, sure. But somebody know a literary agent? Welcome, motherfucker, up! Chris Cologne come up with an original idea. I should tell Raskin. That's a good fucking idea, to be so honest too. with you. That's a fucking rom-com right there. Megan, get Raskin on the phone. <laughs> Isn't it possible to get Raskin on the phone? No? Yeah. I want to run it past him, man. I want to, And if it happens, I get a taste, Chris Cologne. 
I get a, a whiff, if you will. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. That's lulu.com. That's, I understand that. I just wanted to spell it out. <laughs> <laughs> Normally one says it that spells it. Still, lulu.com. What is that? Do you know what it is? I don't know. All right. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. Search for Double Jackpot Christopher Cologne. A paperback version of the book is $15 and a PDF file is only 5 bucks. Five dollars yeah. is insanely inexpensive. Fifteen is not even that bad for a hard for a paperback version. No, this is a million dollar idea right here. Like a, a fucking a movie about a dude who fucking is stuck between two chicks, both of who play his birthday and win the lottery. Come on, come! I, like I can it. see that trailer. Chris Cologne is on to something. Nobody else can smell it but me. I'll read it. Thank you. I'm gonna make that smelly joke. I know on. you're trying to get me to laugh again. It worked once. <laughs> Double Jackpot is a self-published book by Chris Cologne, man. It's the first book in his comic books, heavy metal video games trilogy. Book two, Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, should be coming out soon. Get all the information. At Chris Cologne, like a motherfucker. I and will his totally book, read this. Double Jackpot. I'm serious. I'm going to recommend that to fucking Raskin. That's, how is that not a movie? You know what I'm saying? This could be a sexy movie. You could do an R-rated version. There could be nudie in it. And you could sell them fucking both chicks. Maybe a little penetration. Maybe a butthole shot. No butthole, no care. I would like to formally apologize to Christopher Cologne. Right no, now, sex sells. <laughs> Chris Cologne will appreciate that. He's like, thanks for throwing a few buttholes in there, man. Don't forget to check out two strangers one podcast.net, your one stop resource for everything show related. You can find links to subscribe to us on iTunes or on Stitcher. You could also find links to buy my book, Double Jackpot, on two strangers one podcast.net. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you're cool, and fuck you, I'm out.